Palmas. Yo soy Ramiro Salazar, director de la Biblioteca Pública de San Antonio. Me da este honor. Now I'll translate into English. Good evening, everyone. I'm Ramiro Salazar, director of the San Antonio Public Library. Welcome. Uh, it's my pleasure to invite our Councilwoman, Terry Castillo, District 5, to open our meeting this evening. Councilwoman. Good evening, everyone, and welcome. Again, I'm Terry Castillo, and I'm proud to represent San Antonio's District 5. I want to thank our San Antonio Public Library and Public Works Department for putting this design unveiling together. I'm excited for this design unveiling for Las Palmas Library for a number of reasons. The great thing about projects like these is that we made sure to engage community and the public for their feedback to incorporate it into the final design. Some of the improvements that we can expect are technology upgrades to the community meeting room, the addition of a shade cover in the front of the plaza, restroom renovations, building systems and improvements, and more. This project comes out of the 2017 bond. So although I was not on city council at the time that this project was adopted, I appreciate the $1.8 million in funding that was carved out to ensure that we continue to improve our District 5 libraries. As a council office, we want to ensure that the Las Palmas Library continues to serve as a vital resource for our West Side community. With that in mind, I would like to briefly update you all concerning the 2022 bond. Uh, if passed, the proposed 2022 bond would bring additional improvements to the Las Palmas Library. So there's potential, if passed by voters, that an additional 5.25 million can come towards the Las Palmas Branch Library based off of the West Side Strategic Area Development Plan, which could further establish the services so much needed in, in the West Side. So we're excited. And again, now it's in the hands of the voters for you all to approve that additional 5.25 million. Finally, because we're so close to Fire Station 33, I have to recognize Velma Pena and the work that community put in, in uh, securing additional funding for Fire Station 33, because it's right down the street from the public library and ensuring that we're accessible to public safety. But with that, I want to be sure that we recognize our uh, library board of trustee, Jeremy Landin. If you could stand real quick. He has been doing a great job in asking the right questions and ensuring that we have a voice um, when it comes to District 5 libraries. We have a lot of good things to look forward to here in District 5. And again, I, I'm proud to serve District 5. And with that, I would like to hand it back over to Ramiro. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman, and thank you for your continuous support of our libraries and all of the communities that District 5 serve and, and throughout the city, you've been very supportive. We greatly appreciate it. So tonight's meeting, uh, we have Spanish translation para esas personas que prefieren en, en español. Tenemos servicios de traducción, uh, así es, aquí, en un lado de mí. Este, anyway, we, what I was saying for those that may need Spanish translation into English, or English into Spanish, rather, we have translation services today. Uh, this meeting is live streamed and will be recorded for those individuals uh, that might not have been able to join us today because of the weather, or because of the time, and, uh, and so on. We will make this uh, meeting available um, on our website. And we will also continue to solicit, uh, or rather, take efforts to communicate to our users, to our public, to our stakeholders, uh, the plans for the renovation which will transform the Las Palmas Branch Library into a beautiful, more beautiful location um, and library. And so we will again continue to reach out to the community to inform uh, again our community and, and our users of our ongoing project. Um, we plan to have, uh, once we get through this meeting and we take the design uh, to the Library Board of Trustees for approval, we plan to have boards out in the public area to show the images, which you will see soon. I know you're anxious to, to get to that point. Uh, and we trust that you will be just as excited as we are with uh, the work the architects did. Uh, they took your, they heard you when we had our first community meeting. You provided some valuable and important feedback. Uh, we responded to, to that feedback and you will see how the architects uh, incorporated your feedback as part of the design 
work that they did. Um, we will have Q&A later after the presentation. I will be inviting our assistant director, Kathy Donnellan, soon to start the, the presentation and share with you the design. But we will have Q&A, Jessica Zurita, assistant to the director, will facilitate. We'll ask you, we will ask you to speak to the mic and she will come around and just raise your hand and we'll come to you. Um, I would also like to acknowledge some board members here. Uh, we have Ms. Joanne Harris, who represents uh, District 2. Ms. Harris, thank you for being here. And of course, Jeremy Landina has already been recognized. And it's good to see a former board member representing District 6 who served many years on the board. We have an opportunity to work with, with her on many projects. Laura Eckler, thank you, thanks, Laura, for being here. And we're pleased to see Ms. Velma Pena, president of the West Side Neighborhood Associations Coalition. She's been very supportive. And she's been a very strong voice along with the Friends of Las Palmas Branch Library to make sure that we were listening and that we were responding to any issues or concerns or expectations and aspirations for uh, this project as well as for hopefully phase two uh, if the voters approve the 2022 bond program. So we're excited. We have a bright future ahead with uh, improvements to the Las Palmas Branch Library. I also want to acknowledge our library team, Kathy, Kathy Donnellan, Assistant Director, who will make the presentation soon. Dale McNeil, who oversees public services. Kathy oversees the support services, which includes facilities, capital projects, and uh, technology, and so on. Uh, Jake Otland, who is public services administrator and provides management oversight, along with Jose Luis, uh, here at the Las Palmas Branch Library. Mark Losell, the project control manager, works with Public Works, and we do have someone with Public Works here. Uh, Public Works actually undertakes the projects on behalf of the library, but we work as partners. Stacy Gonzalez is here representing Public Works. And Mario Martinez, Assistant Director of Metro Health, is he here? Uh, representing Metro Health. Oh, you're representing Metro Health. Uh, we share a, a, a facility, so it's important that uh, we have them here at this meeting. I believe I covered all my notes. I know you want to look at the uh, design slides. And so with that, Kathy. And Romero introduced a large number of team members with the community. It takes a lot of folks to make these projects a success. And there's one more I want to introduce. That's Luis Maltos. He's one of the assistant directors at the Public Works Department and our partners on the bond project. So with that, I have the very exciting job to present to you the design for the project. So first, a little context. So really the focus of this bond project is to increase um, ease of use by customers, um, definitely to undertake improvements to the plaza at the front of the building. We got a lot of community feedback about that space. And, and also to refresh the branch. Um, it, it needs refreshing for furniture, carpet, the whole, the whole situation. So to refresh the branch and the exterior of the building so it can be a source of pride for the community. So um, several folks have mentioned that this is a bond project. This is a 2017-2022 bond project. The funded amount was 1.7 million. We tend to pinch every penny until it screams, so we were able to bring some more resources to the table through support from our San Antonio Public Library Foundation. There were significant <coughs> gifts added to the um, budget for the branch. So first, um, a Peggy Norris Lee gift. It was a bequest of $100,000. And that's going to be used to improve the children, teens um, area and the meeting room that we sit in right now. So that was a significant gift to assist with the project. We also have HEB technology funds that will be used to improve the computer lab, which, which we call the Connect Computer Lab um, as a major donor. We work with other city departments to find resources that align with the goals, for example, of sustainability. So there will be an LED lighting retrofit throughout the building, and that um, brought funding to the project of 106,000. And then finally, um, our, through our building and equipment services department, we were able to secure some funds to help with the heating, ventilation, and air conditioning system. So that brought a little bit more. So in total, it all adds up 
and we have um, two million twenty four thousand one hundred and forty two dollars just to get all those dollars in so um, took a one point seven million dollar project and got um, over two million for in total so that was very exciting so um, we take the input of the community, the council office, and the staff who work here very seriously. So we go through um, a process which I know many of you have been involved with to get input. And so I'm showing just the major bullet points of the input we got from the community about the needed improvements. And I'm pleased to say that all of these areas will be covered in the design that you'll see in just a second. So with that, we'll go to the interior. I know this is probably a little bit hard to read, but it, the main takeaway from this is that we're not just um, improving the furniture, the fixtures. We really are moving some spaces of the library around to make it much more user friendly and to make the customer experience much better. Um, a big part of it is making sure that we have dedicated spaces for children's, for teen, um, for the computer lab, and we will be um, adding to the project a Learn Center. And you'll see a little bit more about that in a minute, but that's a brand new service being brought to the branch. So we're, we're all familiar with this. This is the existing. And so you can see this is what you'll see as you enter the branch under the new design. So much more open. Um, what you see in this particular image is the self-service area, so where you can do self-checkout, where you can sign up for a computer. By, by placing these at the entrance as opposed to kind of coming up to the service desk right when you walk through the door, it makes for a much more open space. There's also going to be digital signage included in the project. These are big screen TV monitors where we can push out content to the community on those signs. So you can see what upcoming programs there are. Um, we'll have information about what services are available at the Learn Center and that type of important information. This is the existing circulation desk and one of the big um, issues we wanted to solve with the design was to make it so that you don't feel quite so claustrophobic as you enter, kind of everything's just happening right as you walk in the door. So this is the new layout. This will be um, still in the center, but it'll be a much more open feel with the main circulation desk. You'll also see that around the circulation desk in many of the stack areas, we have lower shelves, which really helps with that feeling of openness, but also visibility throughout the branch. Um, and we'll still retain you know, a very robust collection, but this just allows us to have a, a, a better feel as you walk in. So these are the existing computer stations, very significant changes. Um, the computer area will all be collapsed, um, so all of the computers will be adjacent to each other. And then also we're introducing a new piece of technology into the branch. Sometimes when we don't have room potentially to add a great number of additional desktop computers, you know, that would be on these tables, we add a laptop kiosk. So it's a self-service device um, that will be in the computer lab that will allow users to walk up and check out a laptop um, to use within the branch. And so by doing this, we're able to um, greatly increase the number of computers. So we'll be almost doubling the number of computers. Um, as I mentioned, a, a brand new area to this particular location is the Learn Center. And what this center is about is it's about connecting folks with resources through the library um, when they're pursuing adult basic education is what we call it. And so it could be everything from looking for resources to continue um, to learn English as a second language or uh, to get resources if you're pursuing your citizenship um, if you're pursuing a GED or an associate's degree, bachelor's degree, you know, secondary education. Um, it can be connecting folks to resources such as child care assistance, utility assistance. So it really is sort of a one-stop shop to help people lay out a plan for what they want to do with their education and learning and um, connect them with resources. 
Um, you are very familiar, I'm sure, with the branch being a vital record site, so where you can um, come and get birth certificates. Um, there, that was kind of retrofitted onto the branch, so this will really give a good service desk space for that function, so that's an improvement. And then the children's area will include um, children's computers within the area, and it's a, it's a good dedicated space on the floor plan. It'll have refreshed um, paint and finishes. You'll see the color board in just a moment. Gonna be a much more exciting color scheme. So this is one of the two murals that we're actually gonna be relocating, and actually you can see the mural at the back of the room. So this mural is going to be relocated to the children's area because we felt it was a really nice accent of that particular space. So that'll be associated with the children's area and the new floor plan. Um, teen area is being moved to a, a much more separate space for the teens and it'll also have um, some visibility through some screening that we're gonna use um, for that space, um, there'll be printers located nearby and also embedded technology. And then the service points. So this is kind of the bread and butter. Um, so we wanna make sure that folks have a really good experience at the different um, desks. So the circulation desk is gonna receive um, significant improvements. Um, the staff will be able to see all areas of the library, which really helps us when we want to keep an eye out for a customer who maybe needs help. We can go meet them out on the floor and give them assistance. It'll be improvement to the book drops um, and upgraded finishes, and that really goes throughout the footprint of the building. This was the laptop kiosk I mentioned before. So the way this works is it will be in the Connect Computer Lab, so what we consider the adult computer lab, and um, it'll be near the front entry of the library. And of course, you can get staff assistance the first time you're using this kiosk, but you use your library uh, card, you can check out a laptop, and you can use it anywhere throughout the building. So it's just a way for us to make sure that no one's waiting for a computer. Um, that we always have a computer available, and sometimes people feel more comfortable just picking a place to sit and using the Wi-Fi and using one of these devices. The community meeting room, this is where we're sitting right this minute. Um, so this is gonna get a complete refresh and a lot of great um, embedded technology. As you can probably see tonight, <laughs> one of the things we have to do for the meeting room as it stands right now is bring in a lot of technology. So bring in the podium, bring in the computer, you know, so this is gonna be improvements to the audiovisual system. Um, it'll be improvements to the carpet, and then um, the renovation of the restrooms that are adjacent to either side of this meeting room. Also, and I think I have a picture, yes. So the Hispanic Heroes mural that's currently within the branch is gonna be relocated to a much more prominent position just outside this room. So we feel that's gonna bring a lot um, a visibility to it, and then also it's a large piece, so by putting, placing it out here, there's a little more space around it, so you get a better perspective of it. In both cases where we're relocating the murals, we will also be relocating the interpretive signage that goes with it that says, you know, what is the art piece, what's the context for the art piece. And this is the proposed color board for the interior, so a lot more color. So we really wanted to bring, um, some different colors to the different areas. So you can see labeled, um, there's a certain palette for each of the dedicated areas. So children's, teens, the meeting room, the restrooms. And so it's just gonna be a lot of visual interest with the different carpets and paints we're using throughout. And now to the exterior. So one of the things we heard was we want people to know this is a library. <laughs> we want people to understand um, where they're going when they're trying to find the library and also just need a lot of refresh on the exterior. So this is it as current, as you just saw when you walked in. And then this is what it'll look like in the future. And so a lot of what is happening is with the use of the paint on the outside of the building, which really picks up a lot of the colors in the neighborhood. And then um, you have a little bit better view of it, I think, on the next slide, yes. So one thing we heard very loud and clear is help the community activate that plaza space 
with shade <laughs> so that people can really enjoy being out there. So what this is is a metal roofing structure over the current pavilion structure out there. So lots of good shade in that rendering. Makes me, makes me excited. There will also be Wi-Fi in that area, external to the building and seating. You can see the benches. This is just another view of the system we're using to put the roof on that structure. And there's a couple of other things that we want to make sure of um, that we address, and that is, of course, drainage. Um, we also looked at the condition of the pavers out there, which we'll be addressing. And then we did get input from our library board on making sure that there's um, good ventilation, so whether that might be fans or some, some other way to move the air. So we're looking at that too. Then the, the sign. <laughs> um, I hesitate to call it a monument sign, um, but that is the current sign. So it will be greatly improved. And one thing we're super excited about is this will be one of the first locations in the system to have a digital monument sign. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see from the rendering that um, the sign is quite large, um, much larger than the existing sign. It mirrors the design and colors of the front of the building. And then one of the challenges, I will be very honest with you, about where the sign sits is visibility in that area. So uh, we've made it as big as we possibly can. It will have lighting in the sign. And then the digital monitor is offset um, so that we get as much visibility of that digital sign as we possibly can as you travel down the road. So this um, gives you just the perspective of existing it's in a little bit of a challenging spot right there, but because of easement and the electrical pole, I'm getting into the weeds. But we're making it as big as we possibly can and making it as visible as we possibly can. And so this gives you a really good rendering of what it's gonna look like at the front. So that offset digital sign will help get that visibility as you travel on the road. So that is, in a nutshell, the design um, as it stands, and we did want to share some, some steps that have been taken and some next steps. So um, first, this did already go to City Council for the construction contract, so we are ready to go. Um, if and when the Library Board approves the design, we'll be ready to go. And then um, this month, the design will go to the Library Board for their consideration. Very important, we try our very best and we appreciate the feedback from the community about keeping everyone informed. So May will also um, represent the launch of a communication plan where through multiple avenues, um, including your representatives here tonight, um, we'll keep everyone apprised. We'll also, as Romero mentioned, have some on-site signage to show some of the visuals to the community visiting the branch you know, before we close for construction. We anticipate that construction will start in June of this year. Um, and then, very important, <laughs> right now we're wrapping up the Memorial Branch Library Project. And so we wanted to make sure that we wrapped up that project and had that branch reopened before we closed Las Palmas to make sure we weren't having two branches closed in District 5 at the same time. And then also Las Palmas is a very active voting site. So we're gonna be using Las Palmas as a voting site for the May election um, before we close. So we're, we're kind of trying to thread the needle of when to start construction, so June is when we're gonna start. And then as we do for these closures, that will take some time because of the scope of the project, we will be um, offering interim service. So um, that the details of that are being worked through right now, but we have a couple of options. And so it might end up being interim service offered at a nearby site, or we might take advantage of our mobile unit um, which is called Library on the Go, to offer interim service. So as we start to communicate out more project details through that communication plan, we'll be sure to really advertise the interim services that are offered, as well as other nearby branches. And I think that's the end.
So Ramir, I think it's gonna play traffic cop on questions. <laughs> Thank you, Kathy. Well, that's the, the, the design for transforming the, the Las Palmas Branch Library. We want to uh, provide an opportunity for you to ask questions and for myself or Kathy or Dale to uh, be able to respond to any questions that you may have or the, our team members uh, from Public Works as well. Yes, Laura. The disruptions have been more in the uh, timeline for the projects to get completed. Uh, for example, Macrelis was delayed almost a year. Memorial has been delayed about five months because resources are not readily available because of the pandemic. Uh, the cost, not so much in terms of cost increases that I can recall, I'm looking at Kathy, uh, it has been more, what's been very frustrating for us is uh, having to adjust the timeline. And so we're being very careful to communicate to the public estimated times because it's hard to predict precise uh, times again because of those delays. Thank you, Laura. Yes, Delia? Yeah, uh, projected timeline for reopening, when is that? So we're planning to probably close it, temporarily close the library, as Kathy reported in June. And what is the, how many months, Kathy? I thought that might be a question. Um, so we're, we're like we say, we're kind of hedging our bets a little. I'm just going to be honest with you given the recent experience, but we're looking at a project duration for the construction of about eight to 10 months. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the unfortunate thing. And, and we, we mean in library administration, uh, work very hard to minimize the closure, but we had a situation in Forest Hills, it was closed for almost a year for renovation, complete renovation. Then we had the winter storm, completely ruin all the interior. That community has been without a library for what, two years already? Uh, and that pains me, uh, but that's the reality we are working with. I, I think you had a follow up question, Delia? Well, I had a different question. Okay. No, so we are allowing, we're building in time also within, uh, we're allowing for some flexibility if there's a runoff election. Well, there are runoff elections, oh. so that's May 24th. Okay, that's why I well, there you go, correct. No, it, well, it, is it the city or it's the elections, it's county the elections? Election it's the state municipal elections, state, what is that? Okay, so it's the county elections. Yeah, but when there's the bond election, it's the second Saturday in May. So there are two different elections. Is the bond run first or second? I don't know. Did Jessica, do you know? Okay, but I have to I tell you that th those dates are out of our control. May, May, May 7th is the first Saturday of the month. May okay, May 7th. Thanks, Luis. Thanks. Uh, Ms. Pena? Yes, sir. Um, on the 2023 bonds, if it is cut, uh, whatever is being done right now for the 2017 is not going to uh, interfere with it. In other words, it's going to be totally separate, right? That because they get something done and then something else happens and then they come and they, you know, 
the construction starts no, and I, then it messes something up. I hear you stuff. because I raised the same question. So uh, the library team gets a lot of that feedback from me and sometimes pushback, like the monument sign, I want it launched. Can it be right. bigger? But the, both Public Works and our team said no, technically and uh, physically we cannot because of the power lines and so on. So the, I think it's a great sign. I wanted something bigger, didn't happen. Uh, the initial proposal for the canopy was more like what you find in uh, um, car dealerships, more of a canvas. I said, no, that's, let's do something that's more permanent that prepares us for phase two, because in phase two, you indicated you want it enclosed, and so this project did not have enough money, so we're preparing for phase two. So we think about that as well. Okay. Uh, first, yes. Um, in part of the design, was it, excuse me, was any consideration made for classroom space besides just the adult learning area? Uh, and my second question was, between the 2017 bond and the 2022 bond, how much of that money was allocated to improve the collection in the library? Okay, uh, and Kathy or Dale can jump in in case I misstate some of the, the facts. Uh, when we met with the community, we, there was, that I can recall, no feedback that there was a need for classroom space. There is room for self-learning, self-study, uh, so there's plenty of spaces for that, but not classroom per se. Uh, now, the meeting room can be used for uh, programs or for kind of classroom instruction as, as needed. In terms of the bond dollars, we don't generally use bond dollars for collections. Uh, that is, unless it's a brand new library, that's when we can utilize bond dollars uh, for books and materials. But other than that, we don't use bond dollars for renovation to impact the collections or to enhance the collections. So I, I think, I, did I respond to your question? Yes. Did I get it? Okay. Basically, with the current collection as it is going to remain as it is. Well, no, it's an ongoing evolution. We continue to invest in our collections. Every year we spend, Dale can, or Kathy, what's our, uh, how much? Five About five million dollars system-wide. System-wide, so but spread out over how many libraries? We have 28 branches and the central library, but our philosophy and the way we built our collections is that any item, whether it's in this particular library or if it's in Parman, is made available to any of those communities. Now it may take a couple of days to transfer the item there but it's it's accessible to you it may not be immediately accessible to you so we built the, the collections uh, to as, as best as we can to respond to the communities that we serve uh, there's a if, if it's a community with a lot of young families uh, it may have a, a larger collection in children's and youth if it's a, a community with many seniors it may have an emphasis in that so we look at the profiles of each community and build uh, uh, those collections to respond um, to those communities, the collection that we have in that branch. But keeping in mind that any item within the library system, including Central, is available to any member of, of the entire city. Uh, yes, Linda, let, let's just go ahead. Are we talking about the plaza the foyer, or the foyer? The hallway. The hallway. Yes. The hallway. Uh, I don't, have we started any planning and any internal discussion? Kathy will respond. So um, we really have a unique opportunity with the 2022 bond project. Um, we took the current project as far as we possibly could, but we're trying to position ourselves for the 2022 project if the voters approve it and we would be able to um, focus on this space and making it more functional. So um, one thing I can share is the reason we ended up going with the metal structure over the plaza area is because it then positions us to enclose that space 
potentially in the next bond, and then also think about how this big foyer area is kind of underutilized, really. And so, yes, and so that would be one of the design challenges to, to solve. Well, we'll work with the friends uh, and our branch manager to look at viable uh, uses. I mean, th it's true. I mean, we, we have to be careful about fire code. You can't uh, impact, uh, impede access and uh, egress. So anything that's reasonable that we can, we certainly want to work with you, uh, want to work with the friends. So yeah, we'll have that conversation and see what we can come together and, and figure out something that's acceptable. Uh, Jeremy, you had a question. Um, so I know a few people on this in the last session, um, some of the other clients have recently spoke with you about something similar, but with the, the Metro Health space on that side, so we see all the, all the upgrades happening here on this side, right? And all the library, what the library does have control over. Um, if at some point, and I know, you know, when the community has its mind set on something, <laughs> you know, that space eventually leaves Metro Health hands, um, that means that space would kind of just be in the past still while the rest of this space is all renovated. Um, are there, I guess, thoughts about, about that and, and what that could mean in the future? Or is it kind of out of your hands until something like that happens, until Metro comes out of that space? Yeah. I would just like to share. Uh, okay. okay. Um, let's see. Um, let me respond first to, and then give Metro Health's perspective. I'll let, give you my perspective, perspective first. We had this conversation, um, and yes, currently Metro Health occupies uh, that space, and it's under their uh, oversight. Uh, I see your point. Um, the last time the community had expressed some interest of possibly incorporating that space uh, as part of library space, um, I checked with Metro, Metro Health leadership and at that time they had a need for that space for operations, for whatever operations. And so I reported back to the community that that was out of our hands uh, because it's not, it doesn't be, it, it's not dedicated to the library, it's dedicated to another department. Uh, and if the community was interested that they needed to speak to their respective council member, at that time it was council, Councilwoman Gonzalez. Um, so that I can tell you about that in terms of their renovations or uh, I know we share space and I think we share HVAC with them so we, we do have some communication and we, we're, we're partners in many ways. Uh, so I can give you that perspective and Yes, Ms. Pena, or uh, who was first? The gentleman over here was first? Okay. Thank you. Um, 
Sure. I'm Johnny Nohosa, I'm with State C. Uh, the mural that is in the children's area is over 25 years old, and I really appreciate the opportunity to showcase it in the larger foyer. I can provide detailed information on all of the artists. And again, if we use the term Latino, Latina, role models, not Hispanic. So we want to make sure that that's the context of the mural as well. But uh, so the two artists that are listed were the lead artist, but really it's State C who was the organization that created that mural to honor Emma Tenayuca, Father Benavides, Congressman Gonzalez, and Flaco Jimenez. So I wanna make sure that you can reach out to me for more details. So Absolutely. Opportunity. Uh, thank you, it's over 25 years old. Mm -hmm. um, the other piece is just on the library's uh, online system and the application. Have you looked at updates and opportunities to look at the application that makes it easier and accessible to be able to check out books and to be able to, to log in without using a barcode if you've lost your library card? There's, I think, some national libraries that are doing a really great job of creating an ease of use opportunity, and I know that you're progressing towards that, but it would be wonderful to make it as easy as simple. I'm gonna go check out some books if it's still open, but I don't have my card and I can't log into the app because I don't have a barcode. Okay, well, that's very good feedback and then certainly we'll circle back with you uh, regarding the, the, the art piece. Um, well, we believe in continuous process improvement. Uh, we impl implemented a new integrated library system. We just improved the mobile app. Uh, the, the, I get a lot of compliments about Libby, how easy it is to utilize the library collection. Uh, there's always room for improvements, and so we welcome feedback. If there's uh, other things that we can do to make the user experience, it's all about the user experience. I use it myself, and if something doesn't work, I provide feedback to, to uh, the appropriate staff member. Uh, so I appreciate you, that feedback, and we'll, we'll, we'll look into it, see what else we can do. Ms. Pena? Yes, sir. Um, this, this happened uh, with the previous uh, council person. So when we had the meeting here about this, uh, the 2071 and the renovations and all that, we had asked at that time, <clears throat> and it has to do with mental health, mm -hmm. because we need spaces are always difficult for community uh, leaders or neighborhood association, being that this meeting space it takes priority with what's going on right with the lenders so or, or vote so in regards to mental health i want to know if you're going to if you're all going to continue to stay there would you be open to allowing us to use space for the meeting well i can definitely take that back to our leadership and and discuss this and then get back with um, the director and, and kathy and figure out how we can make that happen um, there's some security issues that we have to be very considerate of because we collect health information. So we have to be very conscious of the fact that it's protected information, so it needs to be very secure. Um, but that's the only thing I can think of right now that would be kind of a little bit of an impediment, but I think that we could definitely discuss that, that question and come back to you all. Okay, because in a previous conversation <clears throat> that we had, we had asked the previous councilwoman to also like put a DeFi, her DeFi office here in the library area. So if you're going to at some point in the future vacate the premises, it would be an ideal for the council person to put an office here in this, in this specific building. I know it's right now it's at the line, but it's ideal to be in this building. Yeah, I definitely agree. I just wanted to say that So we really need a lot of space. Um, COVID really put us in a good tailspin. So we're looking for expansion of our services. Um, we definitely um, have been utilizing that space and we will be utilizing it for the near future and probably thereafter. So I can come back to you with some timelines and um, so, some of those questions that you could ask and, and get back with you all. Thank you. Okay. Other questions? Yes, Dahlia. 
know that uh, there's been a newspaper article and press about the fact that uh, you have the enhanced library card. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell me a little bit more about the enhanced library card, which is part of the Learn Center, right? I mean, that's a feature of the Learn Center right now, and basically mm -hmm. it's a photo ID for persons mm -hmm. who don't have. Or is there a restriction? I mean, do you have to not have anything else, or can anybody apply for? Anyone can apply. It's an opt-in kind of a uh, option. So just to give you a brief history, um, because uh, Stan SA, it's a nonprofit organization that advocates for uh, new immigrants. Uh, work with the library. They advocated for a, a library card that would have the picture that would could possibly serve as a uh, substitute ID. And so I need to give them credit. And we work with with them when we developed this uh, library card, as you explained. Um, and it's available at the, right now we have four learn centers, uh, one at Carver, one at Johnston, one at Bazan, and one at West, Westfall. Um, and those learn centers, and as Kathy explained, uh, they were developed to serve vulnerable and marginalized communities and new immigrants to help them um, with any resources. So we offer that card, but it's an opt-in, but anyone can ask for it. Anyone can ask for, the, for, for that kind of card. Yes, Jeremy. Just a follow-up question to your question. So to make sure, that there's not, so because there are so many closures and things, um, I know Memorial will be getting a learn center, but there won't be a um, gap in service for, for, our, for people to get those enhanced IDs at all with all the closures. Mm, no. the only one with the learn right now. When Bazan closes... No. Uh, Bazan is not the only well, library with the learn. In the, on the website right now. Yeah, in District 5. In District 5, yes. So, but there's no delay. I mean, if we, again, we can't avoid closing the... temporarily closing the library for, for renovation. Bazan is available. West Falls is available. I know it's further. Uh, but any of the other... Carver, it's a little further. And Johnston, so... That service is still available now. So with Memorial will have one. Memorial and Las Palmas will have. I learned. So, so there will be three in District Five. Okay. There's a question online. Okay. What about parking improvements and lights? Handicapped access to the library resources, and will there be improvements on the outside lighting? Okay. I'll. Kathy respond to those questions. Yes, so there will be improvements in the parking lot. Um, the current handicap accessible parking will remain the parking, but we're going to be um, recoding and restriping the parking lot. Um, and what, I'm sorry, Jessica, was there another part of it? Lighting improvements. I'm actually gonna defer to our project manager, <coughs> Stacy. I'm sorry if that was me. <laughs> so currently right now, the, the lighting that we're concentrating will be at the main entrance. Um, we'll have to evaluate the parking lot. You know, and, and look into the sketch farm where we can do some major improvements to the parking lot lighting. All right, next question. Kathy says yes, and so that means yes. That means, that means yes. She's one of the uh, internal advocates for always for security, lighting, cameras. Um, yeah, so. Other questions? Well, I want to thank you all for making time from this evening to be with us as we unveiled the uh, Design for the Las Palmas Branch Library. I uh, hope you're just as excited as, as I am for the improvements. Uh, we appreciate your patience. 
Um, you know, the delay is always is frustrating, not only for you, the public, but also for, for us, is because we make a promise um, and we want to deliver the, the buildings when, when we say we're going to deliver them. But uh, uh, sometimes it's difficult. Yes, Ms. Pena. Can I say yes, ma'am. I just wanted to say it's a little, um, a little tongue tongue because when all of these things were going on with the renovations and all that with Memorial and with Honor, we asked as a community to please leave my library open so that the Edgar community would have at least one library open and they agreed to do that for us. So thank you for that. You're welcome. Well, we're here to serve the community, so, to, so thank you. Uh, again, Public Works, uh, Luis Maltes, thank you, and Stacy Gonzalez for being great partners. And for the community, again, for your patience, for your enthusiasm, and for showing up. You care about libraries, and, and that uh, warms my heart that you're here Can because you love libraries. Can yes. One is, is it a commercial, Delia? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, you may. Absolutely. Yes, please. Hi. Um, uh, just a quick question. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, as soon as she's done, I'll. Sorry. Uh, Sorry. We just wanted to promote uh, the Mafana Polka to help support the Virgil Library. And if you can write out a donation to the front, we will let the library help you with your own needs just to support the library. Yay. Very good. Yes, sir, you had a question? Yes, just a uh, quick question. During building improvements, uh, is Wi Fi still going to be available? We should, we should make it available. Uh, I, I, w I wanna say yes, yes. Yes, um, the answer, my boss wants to say yes, so we're saying yes. Um, there will be some times when the parking lot's being improved that people won't have access to the parking lot and there will be some times when the technology's being improved inside the building where there'll be disruptions. But we'll try to keep that as accessible as we possibly can. Good point. Very, good. Very good point because the digital divide is real, especially for our communities in the west side, south side, and east side. So, yeah, that's a good point. All right, if uh, there are no other questions, again, thank you. You have a good evening and Thanks. drive safely. Thank you.